What's going on you guys? Nick here with another video. Today I'm going to go over one commonly brought up thing when people are talking about switching to Graphene OS or any degoogled operating system and that is the compromises that have to be made uh, on different apps that you may use. For me at least, and I would hope for many others, there really aren't any compromises. You just have to use different apps for different things and the F-Droid store can help you. So when you first get a Graphene OS phone, it has basically nothing on it other than your most basic communications for calling and texting uh, and the Vanadium web browser. Well, if you go to fdroid.org, you can download the fdroid app store and you'll see here there's all kinds of free and open source apps. Now, for somebody like me who doesn't do much social media outside of YouTube, you know, there isn't there isn't a whole lot that I really really do so there are no compromises there but of course you won't get things like instagram or twitter or snapchat or tiktok or any of those apps because a lot of those require google play services in order to work now graphene does implement google play services compatibility and i have another video that i'll link in the description that you can go see how you can do that and it's actually really easy to get it up and running it doesn't involve flashing anything crazy to your phone you simply install all of the applications like you would regular apps, and it just kind of works. So, let's go over a couple things that I use to just use day-to-day. -day. So, of course, I have the phone, I have Vanadium Browser, I have the F-Droid Store. For email, I use Fair Email and Proton Mail. For private communications, I use Session. And then to talk to normies about normal things, I use QKSMS. Session is available from Session's website. QKSMS is available in the F-Droid Store. Uh, it's a really great app. I use the simple suite of apps, all available in the F-Droid store for notes, music, file manager, and calculator. However, primarily for music, I just use VLC, and I've loaded some of my own music on here. I'm slowly trying to switch away from Spotify. That would be the main thing that I would say I use that you won't see uh, in a free and open source version of. However, I don't use it on this phone. I just run it on my computer. And I've loaded just music that I've purchased over the years onto the phone from the computer. Kind of old school, but it works. Podcasts, I use AntennaPod. It is a fantastic podcast app. Uh, it just works really, really well. Uh, it'll let you look for and listen to podcasts in the Apple Podcasts library, among other libraries. It's a great way to find and listen to new podcasts if you're into that sort of thing. 2048 is a little just kind of time waster game that I play occasionally. Uh, for my two-factor TOTP tokens, I use Aegis, which is just a free and open source TOTP app. For a password manager, I use Bitwarden instead of LastPass. Uh, I have Blockada, but I don't use it very much. It is a free and open source app that you can use for ad blocking, uh, as well as they offer a VPN service if you pay for it. Um, I have Bromite as a secondary web browser. I already said the simple apps, the suite of apps. If you search simple calendar on F-Droid, you'll find it. Uh, one really good maps app that I use is Organic Maps. It works really well as far as just mapping and navigating. It does have turn-by-turn -turn navigation, uh, and if you have a speech synthesis program on your phone, you can get turn-by-turn -turn voice navigation on there. Um, now, unfortunately, I do have to use some implementation of Twitter for work just to keep up with zero-day exploits and things that are made public by companies like Microsoft and, and others. Uh, so for that, I use Fritter. It is available in the F-Droid store, See, I open it up here, and well, you can see here I have I follow Graphene OS right here on Twitter. Uh, and Daniel McKay is making some tweets, I guess. Uh, and then you see Microsoft 365 status here, so I can follow different things like that. And then for Reddit, which is really mostly just a time waster, to be honest, you can use Slide, which is just a simple thing that parses out Reddit, I believe you can subscribe to subreddits through RSS feed if you want, and that is a good way to do it, but I also have a dedicated RSS reader. Uh, that's actually how I track the Graphene OS updates, or well, the changelog for the updates, 
However, more often than not, my phone downloads the latest update before Theater, the RSS app, picks it up. Uh, for files, I use either File Manager or Simple File Manager. Both work fine for what I need. Uh, I also have Open Camera. Port Authority is a good app that I use a lot for work. Uh, you can scan open ports whether you're trying to set up a server that needs to have ports open or you're trying to see how vulnerable a server that you have set up might be. Port Authority is a good app for that. Um, Bing is a good network scanning program. Uh, Usage gives you some screen time statistics and things. So you can see uh, what I've used. So I used Vanadium for 12 and a half minutes today. I last used it four hours ago. Gallery. I don't know how accurate this is because I don't spend much time scrolling through my pictures. Uh, however, I may have watched a video earlier today that I used Gallery for, so that could be correct. Uh, five minutes on New Pipe today, which New Pipe... Oh, New Pipe is another good one to cover, actually. New Pipe is a fantastic open source application that simply parses out the YouTube website uh, and gives it to you in a feed here. And by default, it loads the trending page, but you can customize everything. And you can import subscription lists if you're lucky enough to be able to pull them out of YouTube. So, uh, and then for weather, I use Forecasty, which is just an easy to use forecast app. And that's pretty much it. As far as day-to-day -day phone operations go, I pretty much just rely on the Pixel 5 with Graphene OS. Um, well, and by pretty much, I mean entirely. I keep the SIM card in this phone and this is what I use. Now, in another video, I'm going to talk about the best phone that you can possibly have as a YouTube creator, uh, and that's going to be the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, or probably one of the Galaxy S21 lines with an S Pen, uh, although I don't have experience with those ones specifically. So look out for that video. Anyway, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video here. Uh, I just want to show you guys that you really you don't have to make compromises when switching to Graphene OS. There is a free and open source version of pretty much any application that you might use uh, or a re-implementation of it. And then if you absolutely have to have those, you can use the containerized Google Play services, which again, I have another video on how to get those going. Uh, and you actually need this little AEE app. Android, uh, I think it's like Explorer and Editor, it's like, or APK Explorer and Editor. It's a great little app. It does a lot more than just installing split APKs, but um, we can get into that in another video. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you like this video. It really helps it grow. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Leave comments down below. I try to reply to every single one of them if I can, uh, and I like having discussions with you guys about you know different things that we can use. It's great. It opens our minds to each other's not just opinions, but other things that are out there that we may not even be aware of yet. So interaction on these videos is much appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.